Hi, Aaron here. In this video, we're going to look at using Jira workflow properties to configure common controls for building a regulated workflow. Controls that will prevent users from doing things like deleting records, moving records, or editing records after they've been fully closed or approved. By default, actions in Jira are not restricted by workflow status, only by user permissions. This prevents a problem in a regulated workflow. For example, it may be okay for a user to delete a brand new record that was created in error. But it's certainly not okay for that same user to delete a record that has gone through a full workflow and is now closed or approved. The good news is we can fix this using workflow properties. Workflow properties can be accessed where your workflows are configured. For company managed projects, that will be in site administration. For team managed projects, that'll be in project settings. Let's look at a company managed project first. To do this, you'll need site admin permissions and you'll go to settings, issues, workflows. Search for your workflow in the list and when you find it, select edit. When the workflow opens, find the status that you would like to lock and select View Properties. Jira provides a lot of configuration power through workflow properties, a lot more than we can cover in this video. So we'll focus on configuring the controls that are most important in a regulated workflow. First, you probably noticed that I already have several properties configured on this workflow status. I discussed adding these in another video. I'll post a link in this video's description. But to review, these are the properties I recommend adding for locking a completed issue against editing. There are properties to prevent editing fields, adding or removing attachments, and adding or removing comments. Looking at these, we can see they all start with the same prefix, Jira permission. All the controls we implement in this demo will use that same prefix. The next property segment is the name of the action we want to restrict. You can see I'm already restricting actions such as edit, comment, attach, attach delete own, and so forth. Jira supports configuring permissions for a lot of actions. You can reference Atlassian's documentation for an up-to-date list. The final property segment is a description of how you want to restrict the action. You can see I'm using two different configurations here, one to completely disable the action for all users, and another to limit the action to a specific role ID, role ID 10003. Leaving an action open to role ID 10003 is important if you're using third-party apps or Jira automation in your workflow. For example, if you're using a third-party app to apply electronic signatures to your closed issues, that signature app will likely need to be able to write to the issue in order to apply the signatures. So, if you have editing completely disabled, that signature app will likely not work as expected. So, back here on our configuration screen, we want to solve the problem where users can delete a closed issue. To do this, we'll add a property called Jira Permission Delete Denied. We also want to disable moving closed records across projects, so we'll add the same restriction for the move action. Why? Well, when moving issue is allowed, you can't easily restrict where the issue gets moved to. So for example, suppose the user moves an issue to another project with a non-regulated workflow. They'll easily be able to circumvent your workflow controls by editing the issue, saving it, and moving it back to your regulated workflow. That situation is easy to prove, but difficult to detect so we want to avoid it. All right, back on our configuration screen, we're going to disable one more action, cloning. Disabling cloning is optional and not everyone is gonna to need to do this. The decision should be based on whether your closed issues have regulatory data that should not be copied across records. For example, electronic signatures, quality review comments, and so forth. Now we've locked the done status, but no other statuses. So if I had other statuses I wanted to lock down, 
I would repeat this process and add all those same workflow properties to each additional workflow status. But for this demo, I only want to lock the done status. So the last thing I need to do is publish my changes. Feel free to save a backup if you're just playing around. Okay, back on our project. Now we can see that this closed user story can no longer be deleted, moved, or cloned, and it was already blocked against editing. That was configuring a company managed project. The process is similar for a team managed project, but you'll find the configurations in a different place. For a team managed project, go to project settings, issue types, select an issue type, and edit the workflow. Finally, select the status and select properties. Here, we can add all the same workflow properties we discussed previously. And that's it. There's still more you can do with workflow properties. I'm sure we'll look at a few more in a future video. And in the meantime, you can check out Elassian's documentation to learn more. Thanks for watching.